mine Bad bitches every city in my tribe uh, look, 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 look behind Booty dominate the- all right. <laughs> So all women have to say in the beginning of sex is I do not consent to ejaculation and an abortion is justified No, <laughs> because again then you wouldn't be consenting in the action at all No, I mean you can consent What are you to talking certain- about? You can a- have sex a- without an orgasm Exactly. And, and, and Julian, like, I can say, hey, I consent to you smacking me on a bum, but I don't want any hair pulling. Like, I can still engage in that action. No, no, no. The thing is, <laughs> even with, even without, like, orgasm, they're still pre cum. So, I mean, I, dude, that, those are two uh, contradictory very, statements. Very little sperm. Very little sperm. And then there's no inertia. It is. But that's still ejaculation. Huh? No, it's not. That is still it, ejaculation. It is like... What? By definition, it is not. It's, it's it, okay. Even if it's not by definition exactly ejaculation, it still has the same result of ejaculation, which is to put sperm in, which you no, did not, not consent no. to. I think less than one percent no. of pre-ejaculate actually leads to pregnancy. Okay, and then we'll expand on our definition of the consent that was given. Right, the consent can't be given to anything that you know um, has sperm. Yes. Yes, Kenzie. Sorry, sorry, Julian, but yes, that's a good color. <laughs> Oh, yes, you want the red, really? Yeah. Or okay. what else do you have? Let me see. Um, yeah. So, I mean, the argument would still stand. Like, okay, let's say then those that happen to fall pregnant from the pre-crum would not be granted an abortion for whatever reason. But, you know, mm-hmm. all we have to say is, yeah, we did not consent to the ejaculation part. And they they then still ejaculated inside of us. And now this pregnancy is there. And I, I do not want it. So, like, but the, and the, again, that's like SA, right? I, I, it is SA if you ejaculate in somebody against their will. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So if but someone the, is like, mm-hmm. I believe there's no causal obligation in cases of SA, so you can get an abortion. Okay, so all what women have to say is at the abortion clinic that they were, yeah, that's also a good color. Go for it. That they ejaculated in us against our will. Um, if you want to lie and say that you were essayed in an abortion clinic, honestly, go no, for it. No, I'm not it. lying. I mean, I'm saying that that's what people then should say to yeah. their partner. Yeah, okay. okay. Just say, you know, it was implied. It was implied that I didn't want to get pregnant. And he mm-hmm. violates that. Like, it really, okay. like, the whole causal obligation argument, like, essentially, you are almost requiring contracts for sex. Yeah. And that's what we were talking about yesterday, too, if you remember. There's absolutely no social or legal contract in place that would then imply that you're willing to give up your bodily resources for nine months. Like this mm-hmm. contractual agreement is is simply not there. Mm-hmm. I mean, unless there's like a surrogacy, then we can talk about it. Sure, if there's like a contractual agreement, how that would then apply to the case of abortion. But um, mm-hmm. in regular, I, believe, like, I don't think we're like getting anywhere here. Um, I, I do see your points about it. Like, I think we agreed last time that, like, our causal obligation isn't, like, the strongest argument. But I do hope I um, provided my point well that I do see some responsibility in engaging in an action that is going to produce a child. But what I think is it's responsibility? More important... What is responsibility, Julian? Responsibility like by is... By definition. Okay, it, it means you're, like, um, you are... Like, an action can be, you know, attributed to you, right? You are the cause of X action. It, it would be an action taken from an unwanted outcome or an accident. That would be a definition, right? So I'm taking an action because there's an unwanted outcome or an accident happened. Like, and I think that uh, responsibility would then be very subjective. So, yeah, you could even argue that having yeah. an abortion is responsible because the That's person right. dealed with the with the unwanted outcome, just not how you liked it or how you personally would have dealt with it. Okay, I I see your point. Like, let me make sure I'm understanding this correctly. So, like, if somebody is smoking a pack of cigarettes, right, and they get, like, lung cancer from that, right, they'd be able to treat their lung cancer so they're dealing with the consequences of their action that way. That would be one of their ways, like, within their own responsibility. You believe that one... Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. You believe one shouldn't take account and get an abortion for mm-hmm. the consequences of their actions. 
yeah i mean so right there you, you're kind of discounted to causal you, obligation so. like you don't have an obligation to sustain your cancer why should you have an obligation to sustain yeah. pregnancy or, Okay, the point here is that we believe like the life of the you know fetus is valuable, right? So we have to no, look what because they're... you don't give it you you give an SA exception. You can't mm -hmm. have causal obligation and value of the fetus. Like those are two conflicting arguments. Yeah, no, that would be not. more legal versus no, moral. No, it would okay. be legal um, versus can moral. We, can I yeah. can I substantiate? Right. So if a child shows sure. up to my house, right? Um, and they ask me for food, right? Um, and I didn't make them hungry or I didn't do anything that they would show up my house for food for. I don't believe I'm morally obligated to give them food. But if a child that I caused to be starving and I caused to be hungry asked me right. for food, I believe I'm morally obligated to give them food. Right? I don't place a difference in the value of the child in both scenarios. That plays a difference well, on the circumstance in which a child is coming well, to my door. Let's break this down. I would argue that the embryo caused their let's, own let's dependency because they the one second, Jaden, because they actually they have a cloaking device to where they remain undetected by my immune system. And then they actually uh, extend themselves to implant on the uterine wall. And then they actually grow their own placenta. Mm -hmm. So Do I would believe... argue that they're actually an intruder taking my food. Mm -hmm. So do you believe like the fetus is inherently an intruder? If you let somebody in. It has a parasitic relationship, uh, parasitic qualities, yeah. Well, Kenzie, like, is, like, the fetus, like, can you, I characterize it as, like, an intruder or a parasite? You can, depending on the situation, just like somebody Depends coming in your it, house. You conceded entirely. Exactly. Okay. Like, if, if somebody comes in your house, even if it's your friend, right, like, they can have, like, this beautiful relationship with you, and you can have them wanted in your house, and it doesn't make them an intruder, but it makes them your friend. However, mm -hmm. the same person can then extend their, their stay without your consent, and your friend then turns into an intruder. So both are equally possible, and it mm -hmm. depends on the person that is hosting that embryo or it's their property, and they have to decide and make that termination. Mm -hmm. So, like, necessarily, I believe you guys don't really think of it in intrinsically as an intruder. You think more of it as an intruder if the woman doesn't want it there. Correct? Yeah, that's an unwanted entity. Yeah, so it's not well, an intruder. I mean, if, if I don't want someone in my house, they're an intruder. But if mm -hmm. I do want someone in my house, they're not an intruder. Yeah, so inherently the entity is not an intruder. It's that, like, your, characteriz your characterization... Well, then you I could say inherently intruder. people coming in my house aren't intruders. Like, that's what defines an intruder is, is the level of consent. I need to keep mm -hmm. my dress in frame because I don't want TikTok to think I'm short. <laughs> okay. Um, so like my I'm my sure significant Oh uh, <laughs> are you handsome? What did you say, Jaden? <laughs> Jane talking I'm shit? shirtless. Oh you're shirtless. No, okay. Erase those gender <laughs> lines. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, have... I wish. I don't I don't want to get banned. Come on. <laughs> okay, I have a few problems with the intruder argument. Um so like um the first problem I have with the intruder argument is ultimately I don't agree with you that um the baby forced its way in there because like you're the cause of the baby being in that place in the first place right so I don't really believe you can call it a necessary necessarily I don't believe you can call it a you know intruder because I don't like take a person like off the street and then put them in my house and then call them an intruder Jordan, right I don't I'm not the cause of, them being of in my fertilized house. eggs and plant. Yeah. Hmm? What percentage of fertilized eggs and plant? I'm not necessarily sure. 25? 25%. Mm -hmm. So I could, argue, I could argue that sex creates conception, mm -hmm. but it would, in fact, then be the uh, zygote that creates the dependency, which is why they grow their own food source. But you're still the ultimate cause. Right? So, like, if I, if no, I gave I mean, money to, like, if I gave money to my father, okay. knowing he would give money to my sister, I believe I'm the ultimate cause for why my father gave money to my sister. I mean, what? you can go back in no, time. Because your can... father made the choice to give your, your sister the money. What are you talking about? But, but I, I knew Julian, beforehand he was going to give it. But Julian, you could go so far back and say that my grandma maybe potentially caused like me having an abortion in the future because she was already carrying like my mom inside of her. Like that, I think that is a line okay. that we right. can. Like, 
Money, but the thing the is, chat like, in the Discord. I'm sorry, you guys. One sad. The chat and the Discord are very hung up on what lipstick I chose. So, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't do the nude. I would do something that is more pinky because it works. Yeah, well with I think orange. that's what they wanted. Is the second one they held up, which now I don't see. But see, Julian, you, you no, can go the, the, the butterfly effect. That's almost like what you could then describe. Okay, like some... like, he, oh, Kira, the problem with this is I don't like, you don't know that like your daughter was going to have an abortion, right? They're, they're like a fetus. You have no, you know, you didn't know that you're, you didn't know that you didn't know your dad was going to give money to your sister. Yeah, you didn't know that. Well, let's say he told me beforehand, I'm definitely going to give money to your sister, and you gave him Wait, money. I think this is the one you guys wanted. Maybe. Yeah, that's the one. Yep. That's the one. A hundred percent. All right, continue. Because you know what's going to happen. Like, it's a two step process, right? If I, you know, press my pocket, it's not, it's say, not guaranteed because people want to get pregnant and try to get pregnant and they can't. Yeah, it's not guaranteed, but you know what's going to happen. Like, you can reasonably expect it. Well, there's no guarantee that you'll give your sister that money. I mean, yeah, there isn't, but I don't believe that's directly analogous. It was more like of an example. Well, you made the but, comparison. Yeah, yeah. It, it is a good comparison. Yeah, we it's were not, just if pointing... you're saying that it's disanalogous. We're just pointing I, out I like, how so, you I can... I mean, it's not directly analogous. Julian. Like, you can go back, like I just described, like, just your grandma then creating you has somehow caused, like, or your grandma creating your mom has somehow cre- uh, caused, like, you eventually then having, like, an abortion. Like, that, you can go far back enough and, like, find, like, the real so- source of all the abortions that happen. Okay, Kira, my problem with this is, like, okay, you're saying, like, oh, I, you can go all the way back to say, oh, you knew your mother, like, your grandmother was gonna predict, like, your daughter to have an abortion, but, like, the thing is you don't know any of your daughter's Same desires, take. you don't know anything about your daughter there is not a reasonable, like, you know, expectation that your daughter would have an abortion, and that's taking a lot of logical steps, which this are not... This is actually you know, a really good argument, though, Julian, because if we consider causal obligation a chain, do you only have an obligation to the link next to the action? Or do you have an obligation to the third link, the fourth link, the fifth link? At which point do you no longer have an obligation? Okay, I believe if it's reasonably expectable, right? So, like, let me give you, like, a better example, right? So, if I have, like, a coffee mug, right? And, you know, I have, you know, those electric coffee makers. I have one downstairs, right? I, if you I, look at the coffee mug, you can get this one for 15% off. Link and buy it. That's really funny. Uh, <laughs> so, like, if, if I put, like, a coffee, like, you know, the, the little coffee pouch in, like, the area where you're supposed to put it and then like I press down and press through right my action leads to you know a reaction right it's one reaction but I still in the in the same notion there are processes that happen within the coffee maker that you know end up producing that result that I have no control over when my action still had like a reasonable expectation that coffee would come out of the machine Okay, so Julian, let me ask you this. And you putting like the, the coffee like on your countertop, right? And you put it a little bit close and your partner walks by and she burns herself. What was the cause then for the burn? Was it like you making coffee at the get-go? Was it you putting it on the countertop? Or is there no negligence at all? Is there no foreseeable thing? No, I, I heard like, can you repeat the first part of your example? I didn't really get that. Well, I'm just I'm just saying that you can go far back enough, and that that's why we have to apply it to pregnancy as well. Like, at what point is there like a causal obligation? I don't think that sex necessarily gives this causal obligation to sustain somebody else's life, and that's why we also would have to, at some point, go into like the proportionality. But yeah, you you can go far back enough, and at what point would you say this is like reasonable? Mm-hmm. I do agree, but like again, in my coffee making example, there are a lot of processes that happen that we have no control over. Yet we still have like a reasonable expectability. I believe we can apply this to pregnancy and say like there is a reasonable expectability that something is going to happen. Five percent? Not really. Not really. Can you substantiate why five percent is not can, really? Can I give an analogy? Mm-hmm. So, uh, let's say I'm driving in a car, mm-hmm. and I have a passenger. And my husband is driving in another car and we are going uh, side by side. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm not the greatest driver, but my husband is uh, an aggressive driver and is sometimes reckless. And he ends up speeding up in front of me and then cuts me off. And I don't react well to him cutting me off. So I lose control of my car and I end up hitting a guardrail, which uh, leaves myself and my passenger uh, unconscious. Mm-hmm. On the way to the hospital, my passenger loses a lot of blood. It happens to be a rare blood type that the hospital does not have on hand. My husband is not a match, but I am. And while we are unconscious, the doctors hook my passenger up to me to save their life. I then wake up while my passenger is still unconscious. And I am told that I need to remain hooked up to this blood transfusion for the next nine months or my passenger is going to die. Do do I have the right to disconnect myself? I'm so fucking cute, bitch.